Hello everyone, what's happening? You're here with me, Dave, on The Empire. It is late at the end of the Queen's birthday weekend and I posted a picture on our Facebook and social media pages today showing me playing Destiny 2, uh, the PC version, on my Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. I had a couple of people going, hey man, how did you do that? Because that's cool and I would like to do the same. So I'm going to put together a quick video piece, which is what you're watching now, of how I did that. It involves a couple of things and it's important that you have as many of these as you can because this will mean that you get the best experience. First and foremost, you require a functioning gaming PC using an NVIDIA GPU of the GTX 600 series or greater. This is important because that is what is required for the NVIDIA GeForce experience to enable the game stream functionality which is what serves up your PC games to your Android device. The second thing that you will require is a really good wireless router in your house. Now, I'm just going to say this up front. For the best experience, the computer that is going to act as your game stream server needs to be wired to the router. If you don't have that capability, please consider picking up something like a power line adapter which gives you the capability to have a wired network that is run between the power cables of your house using these funky little plug-ins that you plug into the wall in a power socket and you plug a network cable into it and then there's two of them one goes where your router lives and goes into your router and the other one goes where your computer lives and goes into your computer and through the magic of technology you are able to have a wired connection including the stable low packet loss streaming capabilities that you will require to get the best experience for this so that's a pro tip now once you've got your computer and your networking sorted out you're obviously going to need an android device it can be pretty much any Android device. However, I'm using the Samsung Tab S3. It's got a lovely screen. It does all the things very, very well. And it's great for just having a PC-like experience um, when you're not anywhere near a PC. And the final thing that you're gonna require is an Xbox One controller. And I think it's important to point out that that Xbox One controller has to be of the variant that has the three and a half mil jack in the bottom of the controller by default. That is because this flavor of Xbox One controller has Bluetooth functionality built into the pad. You don't have to faff around with USB cables or dongles or anything else like that to try and get it to work. Also, I recently did try and use the Xbox, or sorry, the Windows 10 Xbox wireless adapter on an Android device. I didn't like it one little bit. So get yourself one that has the functionality you need from the get-go. Pro tip number two. On the Android device, you are going to be downloading an app called Moonlight. Moonlight is a free app that uses the NVIDIA GameStream APIs to make any Android device appear as if it is an NVIDIA Shield. And the Shield, which was a cool tablet or a cool little controller type device, released by NVIDIA, was probably one of the best ways to have PC games streaming to a mobile device up until the point that somebody went, hang on, we can do this anywhere. And yeah, just go onto the Google Play Store, download the app, and then you're going to need to do a little bit of setup. Now I'm hoping that there will be a magical PC video overlay of this. As you can see, I've got a gaming PC behind me, which I'm using to sort of run through this. You will need to go into the GeForce experience and if you do not already have an account you will have to set one up and sign in. Once you have done so, download the latest drivers for your GeForce graphics card and then go into the settings which is up in the top right hand corner of the GeForce experience window and then two things you need to check. One, go into the general tab and make sure that your computer is game stream ready. If it's not it will tell you there and I'm sorry you're basically out of luck. For this particular method, there is another way, but I'll go into that in a different video. Then, as long as it's saying that it's game stream ready, you can go into the shield tab on the left-hand menu, and you can flick the game stream 
weeks later to the on position. Doing so will effectively establish your gaming computer as a game stream server, allowing you to then play appropriate games or games that support game streaming functionality on your mobile device. Now that you've done that, you're going to need to do a few things on your Android device. As I mentioned, I am using the rather excellent Samsung Tab S3. Now, hopefully, I have been able to record a wee screenshot or two of this as well, and you should now see that instead of my beautiful face. So, <laughs> ah, yeah. So, every, that is what is in fact happening now. You should see that I have gone into the Bluetooth menu, and I have enabled the Xbox One wireless controller, which has been picked up as a wireless device because I have turned it on and I have pushed the small button on the top of the control pad to sync it and then I have attempted to sync it like any other Bluetooth device on an Android mobile or sorry, an Android tablet or phone. It works exactly the same way and it syncs up and it accepts it as a game input controller. Then you go into Moonlight and once you are in Moonlight it should scan the wireless network that your device is connected to which should be the same network as your gaming PC being attached to as well. If it is not, it will not work. So, same network, wireless device, looking for your game stream server, which is your gaming computer that you have enabled game stream on, and it should find it there. It will be your computer name. When you push on it in order to proceed, it will advise you that it needs to synchronize and it will give you a four digit PIN number that you need to put in on your computer, which should now have a small pop-up on it saying that an NVIDIA Shield would like to pair. This is Moonlight appearing as an NVIDIA Shield device to your computer. Put in the four digit PIN number, hit OK, and then you should see a list of games that are installed on your desktop computer or laptop, whatever you're using, which support the GameStream functionality. You can now play those on your Android mobile device. That's pretty cool. So, there's a few things that you should also be aware of when you're doing this. The device operates on a one-to-one -one basis, and that means that when you are playing games on the mobile device, your computer is also being consumed. You cannot play or queue up games on the mobile device and have the computer doing something else in the background. It is effectively extending you being sat at the computer to you being sat in another room, but it is the same thing. There are also quality settings that you can look at. Now you're gonna to want to just sort of spend some time and get familiar with these because if you experience stuttering or you move too far away from where your Wi-Fi access point is and you lose the Wi-Fi quality, there is going to be a performance impact in your gaming. So one of the ways to balance that is to drop the settings down to an acceptable level in terms of your overall uh, resolution and bitrate and all these other sort of wee things that you can do to optimize that. Now obviously I recommend being as close as possible to the Wi-Fi access point. I mean, you know, I try not to be more than like five meters away from it for best results. Again, if you're running on a five gigahertz band, Distance is important because it is short range, but high, uh, high bit rate and um, high quality. 2.4 gigahertz, you have a little bit more leeway with, but honestly, I wouldn't try to push that above 720p, 60 frames per second. And even that's perhaps a little bit optimistic. Remember, it's not as simple as Netflix streaming, for example, because it's running a two-way stream. The input from your mobile device is going back up to your computer, which is acting as a server, that's all being interpreted. Things are happening. Frame rates are uh, frames are being created and processed and pushed down. And you know, it's it is a continuous two-way communication loop. It is not simply content being pushed down from a server to your device, which is really where the difference between a service like Netflix or Amazon Video versus this continuous two-way comms is going to be noticeable. The last thing to note, not all games support GameStream. I do believe that GameStream is a better offering than the Steam Playlink service, which is another Android app, which is in beta at the moment, but 
it looks like it's just going to work really, really well. But you may find yourself leaning towards that if, for example, you have an ATI graphics card and you want to do something very similar. The game streaming on Moonlight does allow you to run Steam. And therefore, it does everything that Steam Link could do, plus more. Because you can also run games that are native to Windows 10, like Sea of Thieves, for example. You can also run your Blizzard Activision games, like Destiny 2, for example. And it just gives you more capability and more freedom. And so therefore, I think it is a better offering than the, uh, than the Steam Play Link. However, your hardware choices may limit you in being able to consume those. So, fire beware for that as well. Now, anyway, I really hope that this video has helped you out if you were wondering how to set up and run this type of um, streaming or game streaming service without spending uh, money on an NVIDIA Shield device. The great thing about this is that they've actually made the APIs highly accessible and free to use so that things like Moonlight can exist. And that's really cool. So credit to NVIDIA for that, absolutely. Now, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you would like to leave a comment or you have any feedback, please do leave it in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to The Empire NZ, just hit the subscribe button for us. It really helps us out and it means that we can keep delivering content like this that might be useful for you. As always, stay with us here on The Empire for more tech tips, video reviews, and of course, all the gaming that you can handle. Thanks very much. I was Dave. See ya.